If you're one of those people that can tolerate wheat products, God bless you. You want to know what the rest of us want? A decent bagel. Hey friends, my name is George Gianaris. I'm a chef of 37 years. Happy 2022. And if you're here, it's because you like to eat healthy, save money, and cook like a pro. Today I'm going to show you how to make top-notch gluten-free bagels from scratch. I've already released a video on how to make the best lox from wild-caught salmon that you've ever had. And in an upcoming episode, delicious organic cream cheese. Let's begin. It's essential that you weigh everything. 700 grams Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour, 14 grams of granulated sugar, 9 grams of fast-rising yeast, 532 grams of water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 milliliters of xanthan gum, 28 grams of powdered organic psyllium husks, 8 grams of gluten-free baking powder, 10 grams of fine Celtic sea salt, 13 grams of organic light brown sugar, 1 teaspoon or 5 milliliters of organic apple cider vinegar, 118 grams of Kerrygold butter, a quarter cup or 600 milliliters of maple syrup, you can substitute honey, and one large egg white, which you're going to whisk with 1 tablespoon or 15 milliliters of water. This is Bob's Red Mill gluten-free flour. Not to be confused with Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one gluten-free baking flour. If you use the one-to-one, -one, your bagels will be total <laughs> Melt what eventually will be 118 grams of soft butter. Start out with a little over a quarter stick of butter or 120 grams. Melt it on a low flame until about half is melted and then let the rest melt naturally. You want the melted butter to be at room temperature. Get your water to a temperature between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit or around 38 degrees Celsius. Add your weighed water to the mixing bowl and whisk in the granulated sugar. Then the yeast. Set it aside for at least 10 minutes or until the yeast is frothy. You're gonna need to proof your dough at around 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius. I'm monitoring the temp using a thermometer and probe. Link to it is in the description. Add the salt, baking powder, xanthan gum, and sugar. Whisk them in until they're dissolved, then the psyllium husks, whisk those in, and finally the flour. Beat on low speed for two minutes. Add your room temperature butter and vinegar to the mix and continue to whisk for eight minutes. Keep an eye on your dough, make sure that the sides are scraped down once in a while. Temperature, humidity, and altitude can affect this dough. If it's wet like this, you can add a little more flour till it pulls away from the sides. I chose not to. Wipe down your bowl with a neutral oil like avocado oil. When the dough is done, it will be sticky and somewhat firm. Cover the dough with plastic wrap and a towel. Then let it proof in the oven for 20 minutes. One thing is for sure, you really don't appreciate gluten until you have to avoid it. You know what has gluten in it? Everything! And the elasticity in the gluten, as of yet, can't be duplicated without wheat flour. I mean, the psyllium husks, the xanthan gum, and the protein, the chickpea flour, and the Bob's Red Mill, that really helps, but Proofing a gluten-free dough is very different from proofing traditional dough. The protein in gluten forms a skin that allows the carbon dioxide from the yeast to trap the bubbles in the dough. <laughs> gluten-free dough is spongy, so the CO2 doesn't get trapped in the dough like it does in wheat flour dough. You're not going to be able to create as many pockets in the gluten-free dough, so it doesn't make sense to try and proof gluten-free dough for a long time. I've seen beautiful breads online that have deep craters in them, and I simply cannot duplicate that. I'm not a baker. But if you are and you want to share that secret with me, please, please leave a comment down below. Now we treat this thing like it's a motion-activated bomb. Gently form it into a big ball and gently cut it into eight balls. Gently shape the <clears throat> eight balls. Because my dough turned out a little bit more wet than I would rather it be, I had to keep my hands moist and also the utensils. Keep a bowl of warm water next to you. Wet your finger and press a hole into the center of each ball. You'll find that it sticks. Re-wet your finger and create a hole in the center of each bagel about an inch or 25 millimeters wide. Cover the bagels and let them rest for 10 minutes. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you know your oven. I actually had to use my home kitchen oven to make these bagels because the commercial oven I have in my test kitchen just wouldn't work. It's not an accurate enough oven for baking. It is important to preheat your oven to a consistent 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius. I set mine to convention bake and it worked beautifully. You're gonna boil two quarts or just under two liters of water with a quarter cup or 60 milliliters of maple syrup 
but you can use honey. You don't want your water to be boiling so rapidly that it affects the shape of the bagel. This part is crucial. You need a 30 second stopwatch. You're gonna boil each bagel individually for exactly 30 seconds on each side. Brush on the egg whites, get the sides as well. I love a good everything bagel. You can coat your bagel with whatever you want, although I highly recommend you use everything seasoning on your first try. Place the bagels in the center rack for 10 minutes. Rotate the pan and set another timer for 10 minutes. Now you drop the temperature to 225 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius and set the timer for half hour. Another crucial point here, do not cut into the bagel until the internal temperature of the bagel drops below 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, because if you do, the bagel will deflate and it will be ruined. This definitely does satisfy. It's like a New York style boiled bagel. Outside texture, yes. Flavor, spot on. However, the inside is more like a really good bread than a chewy, doughy bagel. My sons hate gluten-free bread and they actually didn't mind these bagels. The cream cheese is good, but I didn't have the time to make it perfect when this video was released, but I'm working on it and I will have a stellar, all natural, easy to make cream cheese recipe for you real soon. When it is out, I will add a link to that video at the end of this video. A couple of key eating points. Just like any other bagel, it's gonna taste best once it's cooled inside of the oven. I mean, you can refrigerate them in an airtight container for a few days, but you're gonna wanna toast the bagels if you're not gonna eat them on the same day. Can you freeze them? You sure can, for a few months at least. A PDF printable recipe is on my website. Please do me a favor and invest in my channel by helping it to grow. You can do that by simply hitting that like button, clicking on the notification bell next to the subscribe button, or better yet, while you're downloading that recipe from my website, sign up for my email blast. Once a week, you'll get an email notification that a video is released and possibly a few exclusive perks. All the best and cheers. Hmm.